Are you going to step up or step off? That's a good question. It's one of the lessons I've learned while mentoring. And I want to give you an example of two people and what they ended up doing and what I think the results would be. The first is Medi. He's a mentee in Australia. He had a very promising career. He ended up quitting that job to pursue QLA full-time. And he ended up putting together an absolutely great board of directors, a dream team, when he talked to his dream team about getting accounting and law firms on a success-oriented, rolled deferred fee basis, they said, no, you'll never be able to do that. And uh, guess what? He did do that, to which they just said, wow. And exactly. So he went against conventional wisdom. He went and followed the steps of QLA, and he was successful. He now is in the process of interviewing financial institutions and he's heard the same thing, that this is the best deal you're going to do from his board. And what he said to me the other day was, I proved him wrong once, I will prove them wrong again. And I firmly believe that Medi will do that. In contrast is Alex, who bought my course. He emailed me a couple times about uh, problems he was having getting started. And I suggested most of that was fear, self-confidence, etc., and I said to him that I thought he should go and read a book called Release Your Breaks by Jim Newman. Uh, I've mentioned that a lot of times. If you haven't read that book, I would highly suggest that you read it. It'll explain to you why you do some of the things you do and the imprinting in your past that led to that. Uh, Release Your Breaks was out of print, but it is now back in print. You can get it at Amazon, etc. So I'd encourage you to do that. You can also find it online. Someone actually read it. It wasn't Jim Newman, but if you prefer to listen that way, you, you can. The mentees that have looked at that book have said it's one of the most, if not the most, uh, impactful books that they've ever read. So it's, it's that important, I think. It's about getting out of your comfort zone, which for most of us is an issue. And for Alex was an issue. And when he wrote to me, what he said was, thanks for the suggestion. I'll give it a look. Frankly, I think mentally I'm not fit to do the system. I hope in a year I'll be able to muster the courage. Right now, I think I'm wasting your time and mine. And I hope that in a year he ends up thinking about this differently, but the situation won't be any different between now and then unless he makes some changes. And I think a big part of that is just beginning. The timing is never perfect. You don't have all the tools you wish you had, but begin where you are and end up doing the things that lead to success. One of the things you'll find is that the QLA system, which the, the success of that speaks for itself. Whether you'll be successful, I always say I can't predict that, but the success of that speaks for itself. It is a proven system over 25 plus years. It's created an immense amount of wealth, and so you would uh, do good to follow a path that has been successful. To me, I always look for that in anything I'm doing. Does it work? What's the proof that it would work? And then can I apply that? The other thing I say all the time is that QLA is simple, but simple isn't the same as easy. And when you get into those hard areas, some people have a tendency to look at what their options are and to take the short-term solution to a long-term problem. Uh, I think it's really important to remember what integrity is and how important that is to you and your future. And even when you don't think you can afford to act with integrity, acting with integrity is the right move. Uh, it certainly has paid off for me over and over and over again. That was drilled into me at an early age, and it has served me well. And I want to give you an example of the flip side of that coin. The neighborhood we lived in in Connecticut was a very nice neighborhood. There was a CEO who owned a company, had the largest home in that uh, area of homes we were in, um, just an absolutely beautiful home. And the other day, it came to my attention that that home was on the market. So I ended up talking to a friend in Connecticut, and he said that uh, it was on the market. It was also in foreclosure, which seemed odd for a CEO of a company. And so he sent me the article, that neighbor 
had been sentenced to 18 months in federal prison for tax evasion. And from, I'm not going to mention his name, his family has already been dragged through enough dirt here uh, as a result of his actions. From 2008 to 2011, so-and-so engaged in fraudulent billing using two intermediaries in Taiwan, and he instructed the intermediaries to charge his company an inflated price and then kick back the overage to him, which he put through overseas bank accounts and overseas entities. So he received more than $633,000 in income. He ended up having a total tax loss to the Internal Revenue Service of $186,000. He was ordered to pay back $430,000 with interest and penalty and sentenced to 18 months in federal prison. So when you think about it, forget what's right and what's wrong just for a second, is that we all know he shouldn't have done that. But he has ruined his future over six hundred and thirty-three thousand dollars of income, thousand uh, dollars of income. Um, to me, when I look at that, he's probably lost his family. He's certainly lost his uh, many of his citizen rights, uh, right to vote, et cetera, et cetera. He will find it extremely difficult, if not impossible, to end up having a meaningful career after this. Anyone who does background on him and remember investigate before you invest if you were looking at this successful quote unquote uh, entrepreneur and came across this in your background you clearly would just say next so it's amazing to me there's always i think another solution to the problem and the path of least resistance is usually the wrong choice so i hope this is helpful i hope that <clears throat> it's important to you to think about Um, whether you're going to step up or step off. And then in times when you're tempted to take the easy way out, just think of this situation. Think of how important your integrity is, and you'll make the right choice. I'm, I'm confident in that. Okay. So if you have any questions or comments or ideas for future episodes, please email Bruce at BruceWhipple.com. And if you're not already on our mailing list, head over to BruceWhipple.com and sign up and grab any of the free reports. That'll put you on the mailing list. There is a lot of free information you can use to acquire already profitable businesses. This is Bruce Whipple. Thanks for listening to the Business Acquisition Podcast. And remember, you miss 100% of the opportunities you fail to take. And procrastination truly is the thief of time. So do something today, please. Your future self will be proud of you.